He's artist Joey Skaggs, who year after year has conned media around the world into reporting silly things that he just makes up. The ASPCA came into existence 110 years ago to prevent cruelty to animals. Today it has 15 agents at work in New York City trying to track down cases of animal abuse. The ASPCA is also investigating Mr. Skaggs. This establishment in Greenwich Village is a cat house for dogs. By that we do not mean a stud service. We mean a house of prostitution for dogs. The cat house is owned by a former country and western singer named Joe Skaggs. At offering Fifi the French Poodle and Lady the Tramp. I had 25 actors and 15 dogs and I staged for the media a night in a bordello for dogs. For $50, your dog can have sex with a female dog while you watch and sip cocktails and take some pictures if you'd like to. Skagg says he performs a service. He says he does not abuse dogs. He says that dogs are matched for size and that attendants are always present to prevent fights and injuries. Skagg says he cares about dogs and that if he didn't, he could go to an animal shelter, pick up some stray females, and then dump them after he was through with them. I had a bordello for dogs, a cat house for dogs, I ran an ad in the Village Voice paper, newspaper in New York City advertising a cat house for dogs featuring a savory selec selection of hot bitches from Pedigree, Fifi the French Poodle, to Mutt's Lady the Tramp, Handler and Vet on Duty, stud and photo service available, no weirdos <laughs> please, dogs only by appointment. So I got 25 actors and 15 dogs and for the news media I staged a theatrical performance in a loft in the village for the news media. I was subpoenaed by the Attorney General of the State of New York for illegally running a house of prostitution for dogs, for which there was no law against it. And when I revealed that it was a hoax, uh, ABC, they refused to believe that it was a hoax. They, they didn't want to give up their, their Emmy. And they were saying that I was only saying it was a hoax to avoid prosecution. Well, that's it. That's our evening at a cat house for dogs. And it is for real. And it is run by Mr. Joseph Skaggs. A new diet plan, the Fat Squad, a group of commandos you pay to keep you away from food. I will have commandos assigned to you 24 hours a day, and they'll beat the crap out of you if you go for that chocolate cake if it's not on your diet. He fooled the media simply by sending this press release to wire services, which then sent the story to newsrooms across the country. Fat Squad got coverage around the world. And Japanese TV even sent a crew to New York and taped Skaggs as a Fat Squad commando trailing a client. Six Fat Squad commandos are here now, this morning, live to maintain tight security around our Good Morning America refrigerator. They're there to emotionally support people morally support people, and to physically restrain them if necessary. Are you serious? Oh, we are serious. Stop them from going to the refrigerator? You bet. And they'll try anything. They, they try to cheat. They're paying us $300 a day. A three-day minimum is $900 in a contract plus expenses, and people try to cheat. This is legitimate, then. What do you have to do to be qualified to be one of your commandos? Well, you have to be kind of uh, intimidating, you have to be intelligent. Uh, we have uh, school teachers and actors and writers and dancers and people who don't have a regular nine to five job, people who are looking to pick up some extra money, people who genuinely care about other people. Have you had any legal difficulties? People say no. you're violating my rights. We have a contract yeah. and, and you have to sign a contract which allows us to physically restrain you. And once you hire us, you cannot fire us, and our commandos take no bribes. So, so on day three, I couldn't walk in and say, I changed my mind. Forget it. The Fat Squad is a hoax. We were had, uh, as were many other respected newspapers and broadcasters, and we apologize. I create social, political, satirical media hoaxes, and they are designed to fool the press and also to have a message in them. And I guess the message really is about media literacy, yeah. uh, uh, how to understand that we are being manipulated at times by government, governments, uh, through the news media, uh, by corporations, uh, by people with an agenda to give you information that isn't necessarily true. My work is done in several stages. First is the hook. The media doesn't respond. They either trivialize it, dismiss me, attack me. I do it three stages. The hook, coming up with a concept that uh, I find interesting, plausible, doable. What's the budget? How many people? What's the location? Do I do a fake ad in a newspaper? Do I do a TV commercial? That's the hook and executing the theatrical performance. The work is done in three stages. There's the hook, 
coming up with a concept. Then the line, which is them believing it. And I document that process as well. The line, what the media says about it. And then thirdly, the sinker, when I reveal the truth. Because the realization of deception is when you have the change. Oh. And then the sinker when I do the expose. And I always do the expose because the reveal is the most important aspect of what it is that I'm doing. I am willing to play the buffoon knowing that I will have the last laugh. That's how you get them. But I use, you know, how the, I use things that attract the media, you know, sexism, uh, sexual stories, uh, or sensational stories to attract them. Why do these hoaxes? Well, I'm an artist, I'm a satirist. It's really difficult to get the media to focus on um, the truth because the media does not want to hear the truth. They do not want to be revealed as being irresponsible. And what happens is I tend to be a censored artist. Uh, we lack confidence in the truth providers, then they don't really serve a function. And they don't want the public to lose confidence in them being the gatekeepers of information. Because that's when your consciousness changed. You go, you know, I believe that. That wasn't true, I believe that. And if I can do that with these kinds of stories, hopefully it'll allow people to realize that it's being done to them with more important stories. It's not just fooling people, it's not the gotcha moment, it's the ah moment, I've been suckered in, I believe this bullshit. My work is really about who are you, what do you believe in, how did you come to those beliefs, what are the sources of those beliefs, and have you ever questioned those beliefs? If not, why not?